Hi. Right, front suspension's all welded up now. Um, I've added all the filler parts. It's all been tigged up. So this is a strengthening piece, basically just a, instead of having the tube at the end, it just spreads a load across, makes it nice. I've now I've got my fixed rod ends. <coughs> Never seen them before. It's basically a rod end without a ball in the end. So realistically, once you tighten the bolt up, it's in a fixed place. Now I didn't want any movement in this. Basically that is a lot easier than putting a clevis in as far as I'm concerned. So um, this is what we've gone for. So that's a fixed rod and that basically makes this top wishbone then all kind of one piece once it's bolted up. This part here is now solid, but you can loosen this, this joint off and with the left and right handed thread, you can now dial in the, uh, the caster. So now I can go back from my uh, six and a quarter degrees caster down to five degrees and only moves the wheel forward about two millimeters um, in fact, Actually probably even less than that to be honest <coughs> Just to see which caster angle feels nicer for the car Obviously the less caster angle also the less amount of camber turning I think Hmm anyway besides the point <coughs> so Front suspension is together now and it's all welded up um, have the billet, oh, the billet what do you have? have the uh, fillet plate in here. Obviously, this is 1.2, really thin. This is 3 mil here. I'm just starting to mock up the uh, shock absorber position. These are the shock absorbers off of my car, but we'll be basically. Uh, I think I'm going to use the same company. Um, they're high quality nitron, and we're probably going to get a remote reservoir unit uh, instead of the. The base shock I can get a three-way adjustable then and uh, the three-way adjustable for so I've been led to believe allows you to have a stiffer car in roll but also a softer car in bump because you have low speed i.e. when the car goes into roll that's a low speed bump adjustment and then a high speed bump when it goes over something so the three-way adjustable should be a nice compromise for a road car because now you're going to be able to go over rough stuff and not be affected quite so much by having a, a high, <coughs> high bump setting on the shock absorber. Uh, whether we actually fit roll bars to this car is another question, to be honest. It might be worth not fitting them because it's probably not going to be a race or track car. Um, it could be fitted later on. There's room in front of the steering rack, basically, to put a link bar to go to the back. Um, I have to discuss that one with the customer, to be honest. <clears throat> anyway, so front suspension in all. This is set up full droop at the moment because I'm just ch checking shot lengths. These are just plates just tacked on, and I'm just mucking around with plates at the top here. Um, one thing I'd forgotten about, I started to put the shock at a lot more vertical angle and getting the shock closer to here. Obviously, the more vertical that the shock absorber is, then the, the longer the travel the shock will for the same travel of suspension movement. But unfortunately, I realized, yes, okay, this is hitting the body because the body kind of slopes down. You can see that kind of curvature there is what it's doing. So I just basically threw the front clip on to the car. And yes, it did. So um, I brought this as far out as I dare. Um, don't want to put too much of a bending moment, but I say this is all three mil plate. It's all the way down there and there. The bottom is 1.2, but the, the top and there is three mil, obviously, so are the... Uh, so the brackets for the shock. Uh, <coughs> yes, that's about progress without the front. Front ones, the right hand side is also done. Um, had to to get full droop, which is what this one is in now. We did have to to fill it, or shall we say, cut the chassis and bend that plate a little bit down, just to give me a little bit more clearance of the wishbone. Um, but. <clears throat> no farm, no howl on that. Doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. You'll probably see a little bit clearer on this one. So just drop that down a little bit. Welded that back up. <clears throat> um, but now we can get full droop to full bump without any trouble at all. Front suspension pretty much close as far as the uprights, the wishbones. I've got all the bearings. Obviously, we've got the wheels. Got to get the brakes yet, but that's uh, that's no urgency at the moment. <clears throat> but yes, it's nice to have it all, have it all together. Uh, clutch, uh, flywheel and stuff are on the way, so they've charged my credit card the day, so hopefully they should be here next week. Um, 
So my next four, hopefully we should be getting back onto machining the bell housing and getting the back end all bolted together. Pretty much the front at the moment is uh, uh, just the shock positioning and a final shock length just to uh, uh, determine. Um, steering rack, uh, we've spoken to Unisteer. Um, I could go back to a uh, rack manufacturer back in the UK um, and get a Titan one-off made but uh, it would be nice to do stuff in North America. I'm trying to wean myself off buying stuff in the UK if I can. Um, uh, Unisys seem quite happy to make a rack for it, so uh, I've given them all the dimensions that I need, the critical dimensions, and hopefully they'll come back to me within a few days. I found them on Friday, so it's gonna take a little, take a little time for them to do up their drawing and then send the drawing back to me, just to double check the dimensions before they make the part. Um, <clears throat> yes, anyway, shock absorber, as you can see, is actually leaning back slightly. It's got a little bit of a tilt this way. Um, reasoning being, um, obviously, the lower wishbone with the caster you have is actually forward of the center line. Um, so the shock from the bottom has to be, as you can see through the bearing there, has to be forward slightly. So I've biased that shock mount as far as I can to the rear, but obviously I've got to make sure I've got enough for the steering. Now, I've got 35 degrees of steering in both directions there, and I think the car's only gonna get sort of like 32 or something, so realistically, uh, realistically that's about as far as she's gonna go. So, that's good. That position I'm happy with. That angle I'm kinda of happy with, it's just doing the final length and making sure I have enough clearance for the bolts, etc., etc. Um I also have to make sure, <coughs> this is upside down at the moment, uh, we're gonna fit hydraulic lift rams on these shock absorbers, another reason why I wanted to try and uh, dummy up. This is a seven inch long, long spring, um, probably gonna have to go for something like a six inch long spring for, for this car. Uh, this shock actually has about 10 mil more travel than we need. Um, this is gonna be about, for the 100 millimeters of suspension travel, I think it's about 65 or 67 millimeters of shock travel at the angle that we have at the moment. Um, if you bring that angle, that shock is all more up, then you get more travel in the shock, which is good. The more travel in the shock, then the higher, the, the easier is the, for the shock to control that rate of change. Can't have everything though, because that bloody great big dip here can't bring the shock out. So if I bring the shock out, the shock's got to be shorter. Shorter the shock than having about a two and a half inch piece of threaded body so that I can put the hydraulic lift kit on, everything becomes a compromise. You know, realistically, without the lift kit, not a problem. This body would be quite a bit shorter. I can bring the shock further out to here, bring that more vertical, get more shock control out of it. But realistically, the customer wants a hydraulic lift kit. For a car that's low low, I can completely understand. I've fitted the damn thing to mine, <coughs> but we've got to be careful that we make sure we have enough room because if this, the shorter we make this spring, I think also that has a tendency to affect as well. Yes, so I don't want to shorten that spring too much to make sure that I've got enough room on the thread. Obviously, the longer we use the thread, the shorter the spring you can have made. This is like 350 pounds at one inch compression over seven inches. Now, if I go down to a six inch spring, it'll still be 350 pounds compression over one inch, um, but just the spring's physically smaller. But the rate of change, I think that must, must, it must change above that. Must. Anyway, <clears throat> so I can use this length that I have for, um, for the customers, so I can use this body length. I can shorten this spring by about a half an inch um, and give me enough room then to put the hydraulic lift kit on without too much trouble. So anyway, there as it goes, be it. We shall see um, the next part exactly. Yes. Nothing's ever easy, nothing's ever straightforward. And obviously I've complicated matters in some respect because I'm gonna put the steering rack in front ahead of the, uh, um, well ahead of everything. Whereas normally the original car would have had the steering on the back, we had the steering rack here. But as I said before, I don't like to put my feet underneath the steering rack to get to that. Well, it kind of makes the front now very busy. And previous, the original car had the 
<coughs> um, had the steering rack at the back. Um, shock absorber sat somewhere here nicely. Uh, and this front wishbone point went right to the front. But now I've got a wishbone point I've got to make. I've got to, got to have room for the shock absorber. It's got to be reasonably inclined or reasonably vertical as I can get it. But also I have the steering rack here and make sure the steering rack doesn't hit this when it's on full lock in both directions. So, um, yes, it becomes interesting. Kind of very packed eight inches of the chassis. Um, but it'll come together. Um, yes, yeah, some gentleman said I've helicoiled in here. <clears throat> Something I never thought about, to be totally honest. Um, but yes, you can't helicoil. You can't helicoil aluminium, which has got a piece of steel in it. Yeah, and otherwise I don't like it. So um, I've made a little pick tool, and I've actually helicoiled out another piece of aluminium to test the pick tool. Basically, I could bend the first tiny piece of helicoil back on itself, and then I do a pick tool that unscrews it and it worked quite well so um, thank you very much for telling me about that I hadn't even thought about it um, so yes I'll have to unpick out the helicoils that are in here um, but at least I can take them out without damaging the aluminium so um, it's fiddly but it can be done um, but yes you know I don't know everything so something looks odd something looks funny you got any questions by all means far away you know you can only be uh, <coughs> I can only tell you why I've done something or then go oops <clears throat> so, uh, any information is good. Anyway, so um, progress on the front end the last couple of days. Um, realistically, now, assume 